Behold how good it is and how pleasant when brethren dwell in unity. For the second week in a row, we have a timeout from our run through Leviticus, and instead we are reading Passover portions. April 7th is the last day of the holiday. The second Passover reading covers Exodus 13, 17 to 15, 26, and Numbers 28, 19 to 25. Last Friday, we talked about the elements of a Passover Seder dinner and how you might be able to start your own Seder family traditions with the Messianic bent. But Seder is only a part of Passover. Passover is much more than one glorious night and meal. In fact, the week-long observance isn't technically Passover. It is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Passover is the 24 hours that starts with the Seder dinner and goes until the next sundown. It is a remembrance of the night in Egypt when the angel of death passed over the Israelite homes with the blood of the lamb on their doorpost. The next morning, however, the Israelites had to make haste. They were in such a rush to get out of Egypt that they didn't have time to even let their bread rise. God instructed them to not even add leaven to their bread. They baked it and they fled. In remembrance of the week after Passover, God instituted a new ritual. This tradition comes directly from this week's Torah portion. In Exodus 13, God gives the Israelites the command, For seven days eat bread made without yeast, and on the seventh day hold a festival to the Lord. Eat unleavened bread during those seven days, and nothing with yeast in it is to be seen among you, nor shall any yeast be seen anywhere within your borders. On that day, tell your son, I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead that this law of the Lord is to be on your lips. For the Lord brought you out of Egypt with his mighty hand. You must keep this ordinance at the appointed time year after year. Jewish families work for the week before Passover, getting their home rid of any leaven or chametz. Not even a crumb can be left in the house. It inevitably turns into a great chance to spring clean. Pantries are cleared of cereals, flowers, pastries, and any and all products that the rabbis have deemed unkosher for Passover. Refrigerators, ovens, and microwaves are thoroughly sanitized. The evening of the Seder meal, Jewish families ceremonially search for leaven anywhere in the home. By candlelight, they inspect every corner, under every piece of furniture, and even pockets of clothing for a breadcrumb that perhaps got overlooked. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is not meant just as a reenactment. The Israelites fleeing Egypt ate matzah for a week, and therefore so do we. Leaven or yeast symbolizes sin and evil influence. When leaven is added to a batch of dough, it quickly spreads throughout the dough and alters the dough's composition. This is the effect even if it is the tiniest bit of leaven. That is why leaven is such an obvious symbol for sin, hate, and evil in our life. We have to rid ourselves from it completely. Like the matzah that is eaten all week, believers must be cleansed and renewed from immor immorality, sin habits, and evil influences. The Apostle Paul uses the analogy in his letter to the Corinthians. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are. For Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Therefore let us keep the festival not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. But there is something else we have to remember as well. Our Savior and Messiah, Jesus, was crucified as a Passover lamb, but he was resurrected during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Like Jesus told his disciples, because I live, you will live also. By the power of Christ, we are able to overcome the leaven that tries to ferment in our daily lives. Use this season and this feast to renew our commitment not to the old leaven, but the new leaven of sincerity and truth and to claim the cleansing power of Christ through his death and resurrection. Shabbat Shalom. Behold how good it is and how pleasant when brethren dwell